you know, it's the off season. Nobody loves it, but it's where we are today. Most of the ice is gone. The snow is gone. And uh, Eagle River just held a, a really successful snow cross race. But for us Ice Oval fans, we're looking forward to December. It's another episode of Chasing the Checkers, and I'm Brett with the USSA Pro Star Series and spending some time this evening with a couple of the new faces in the champ field. Uh, joined tonight by uh, number one, Griffin Leapock, uh, number 11, Fred Mankey, and number 334, Dalton Fredrickson. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Howdy. Yep, good to see all of you. Um, let's, we'll, we'll just ask you individually and talk a little bit about your history, where you live, that kind of stuff, and uh, travel. So, Griffin, with that number one plate on your sled there and that number one number, let's start with you. So tell everybody where you're from and a little bit about your racing history. I, I'm from Hartford, Wisconsin. Um, I've always been racing. To, uh, it's been, I think I'm on the 12th or 13th year. Um, came up through WKSRA, WKSRA, um, WKCR, I mean, well, both of them. Um yeah, that's, yeah, been around for a long time. Yeah, yeah, we've been here for a while. You spend a lot of time in pro light, and you're kind of dabbling in champ this year, right? This past year and into this coming year. Yep, yep, uh, that was the plan. I mean, we we stuck with pro light, and then we wanted to jump up into champ and see how we would do, and it looked like we were going pretty well. So we'll, we'll see for next year. Good, good, Mr. Mankey, the number eleven Skidoo. Tell us where you're from. Uh, from Lodi, Wisconsin, just north of uh, Madison, uh, probably half an hour. Um, grew up around racing. My dad used to race super lates um, around Wisconsin, and uh, um, you know, I kind of ventured towards the snowmobiles because that's what I liked to ride around as a kid. And then I actually came up through the vintage ranks. I started in the juniors on a super stock. Um, Paul Sockwell actually rented it out to uh, – or gave me a ride, I guess, um, at Eagle River, and, you know, it kind of uh, took off from there. Wow, so your first race on an ice oval was Eagle River? Yep, it was. <laughs> That's I, a tough place I, to start. I actually crashed my first corner. I came came out of four, and uh, and I dumped it, and coming into turn one, I'm, I didn't even make one lap. And you came back to do it again? I came back to do it again. <laughs> nice. Dalton, you're from way over in Minnesota, correct? Correct. Driving the number 334 Polaris. Tell us a little bit about where you're from and, and your history. Uh, I'm from Thief River Falls, Minnesota, uh, born and raised. And I started racing snowmobiles seven years ago in the uh, USXC cross-country race circuit. It's a circuit that was uh, they just kind of run up here and kind of the premier cross-country circuit, I guess, if you will. So I ran that, started out in the junior 14, 17 class, and then just kind of worked my way up through the junior classes, sport, expert, ran one year a semi-pro, and then uh, got picked up for, from uh, Larson Racing, and then ran in the pro class for them for two years, and then got the wild hair to go uh, ice oval racing, I guess. <laughs> As dumb as that sounds. <laughs> and uh, this is the second year I saw Warriors, and I got a 500 last year and seen some success on it. So just picked up a chance sled this year, and here we are. <laughs> so you literally have two years on the ice oval racing, and you're running in champ class. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Well, it's a pretty diverse group, and I think that's why everybody will find this episode pretty interesting. So, um, Griffin and Fred, have you raced against each other previously? Um, I do not believe so, actually. Um, maybe I think we dabbled with each other in pro light, but I mean, other than that, nothing, nothing before that. No, huh? Oh, never. Wow. And Fred, did you do any F five hundred racing? I did. Yeah, my uncle actually had two of them. Um, Andy and that's you know Steve and my little cousin. He races champ as well. Um. But yeah, they built two of them. I kind of got them into this this whole ordeal uh, through the vintage ranks, and they uh, that was when F five hundred started getting really big, and uh, they actually built two of them. And I rode one for probably three or four years um, while I was in college, and you know, I kind of after after college, I wanted to go you know pro keep progressing, and you know, we picked up a, a cheap Pro Light and. 
Um, you know, kind of came about came about that uh, I could drive for someone this last year, and you know, the rest is history, I guess. Well, I don't think I've ever heard the words cheap and pro-light in the same sentence, but thanks for putting that out there. <laughs> so, uh, Dalton, I, I, your story intrigues me. It probably intrigues a lot of other people to go from, you know, cross-country racing to one year of F500 and then into champ. And there's got to be somebody that pushed you into champ that said, hey, I think you can do this. I, tell us a little bit about how you made that decision to go there. Uh, I wouldn't say anybody really uh, pushed me to do it. Um I just weirdly found a lot of success on the 500 that I wasn't expecting and most certainly I don't think anybody else was expecting either, like at all. And then I was like, well, Dick kind of did the same thing that I did in the cross country circuit. It's you want to be the best, so you got to race against the best. And it was just, you know, follow taillights and learn from them guys, you know, that's who you yeah. want to be racing against. So, yeah. That's <laughs> I think that's one of the things that uh, a lot of people don't really understand is you have to spend some time behind the best before you can be the best. Right. And I think all of you understand that. So, um, Jeffrey, you are the lone Articat in the Champ Pro Light in the Champ Series. I was thinking uh, today before we set this up that uh, I know Matt Gady had a, an Articat out there for oh, a year or so. And uh, prior to that, Gary Moyle, PJ Wanderscheid, people like that. But really, nobody else is uh, championed the cat brand. Where's that coming from? Um, well, we actually picked it up from Marty Miller. Uh, it was just happened to be the right price at the right time for us. And we wanted to dabble in pro light while I was still in junior two. And we had really good success our first year. Wasn't expecting it. And we just kind of stuck with it ever since. And <laughs> it's been working out and we still find it competitive. So we, we just kind of want to keep it going and, We'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, we're trying to make it work, and we'll see in the future. Yeah, it would be great to have another color out there. You know, there's a lot of yellow and a lot of blue, so if we could bring some of that green in, that'd be all right, too. All right, here's a question for each of you. We'll go around and ask you individually, but which track feels the best to you? Like, when you see it coming up on the calendar and you say, oh, we're going to be in Wyawiga next, or we're going to be in Ironwood next, or we're going to be in Eagle River next, and you feel like just by being in that location, you have an advantage over some of your fellow competitors. So, Dalton, tell us, uh, I know you're new to this, but which track feels good to you? Uh, well, I guess for as far as, like, USSA runs, I ran a couple pond races, too, last year on my 500. And I guess we ran one pond race this year on the champ slide, too, in Strathcona, Minnesota. But that's where I do all my testing. Okay. So, I really, I really enjoy driving a snowmobile at Strathcona. But Eagle River just it hits different, you know, I love that track. And I've only seen, only seen two tracks that you guys have been running with for all these years. Uh, Wausau was new to me this year and Eagle River, I guess was last year, but when I first seen it for the first time, but Eagle River just hits different. It's my favorite racetrack. So. Okay. Sure. Fred, what about you? You've been around the horn here a couple of times. So. I got to say Eagle River. I, uh, I love that racetrack. I feel like I can get around it really well. Um, and, you know, if you can get around that racetrack with uh, with Leaf Springs and, and an underpowered snowmobile, like I grew up racing, um, you know, you can you definitely, I think, have a little bit um, better chance of getting around it with a champ sled. Yeah, yeah, good point. Griffin, what about you? Well, I mean, I guess I'll be the odd duck out here, but um, – <laughs> Uh, I would always say Beaujolais. Oh, I, I just love the wide open track and just high speeds. It's definitely my favorite. Yeah, good, good, good to hear. You guys all know I live in Ironwood, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> 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 all right. Um, Dalton takes a lot of people to go snowmobile racing. Tell us a little bit about your sponsors and who helped you. Uh, I actually got a lot of great people behind me. Um, Wall Brothers Racing, number one. Um, if it wasn't for Dermont and Dustin, Jordan especially, Dave, all them guys back at the shop, I wouldn't be able to race, and I'll tell you that for sure. Um, those guys for sure. And then Premier Egg out of Greenbush, he's awesome. Uh, Woody's Traction for sure. Um, who else do I got? Fly Racing, keep me and my guys looking pretty good all weekend. And then uh, Falls Electric for sure. Ashton's Mowing Service, uh, Burkle Grain. 
TG Design. There's a lot of good guys. Gets good. the hood looking pretty good every year, so it's fun. Good, great. Um, Fred, tell us a little bit about driver fatigue at the pro champ level versus F500 and pro light. Uh, it seems to be the one thing that the general public doesn't really grasp as to how challenging it is to go 12 or 15 laps on a champ sled full power. Uh, I can tell you firsthand that it is, it's, it's really difficult to go 15 laps on champ sled, uh, regardless of what track, um, you know, I do the dock and bowl lift business uh, in the summertime, so I always felt like I, I'm strong enough and I'm, I'm in shape. But <clears throat> making the front row of the WC this year and uh, uh, going trying to go 25 laps, it's uh, it's a very humbling experience. And I realized really quickly where the uh, where my major weakness was in racing. Um, but arm pump is huge. I don't know if if you know, people, I've heard of people, they don't get it. Um, but I do. And it's feel, it feels like, um, you're guiding the handlebar and you're almost kind of letting the sled drive itself and you're kind of guiding where it's got to go. Um, instead of actually driving the sled. And it's actually really, it's a really different experience. You know, I, I, I guess that's the best way I can, I can uh, explain it. Right. Ultimately in the champ field, you have to drive the sled. You can't ever let the sled drive you. Exactly. Once that happens. Exactly. And, and you know, the di biggest difference between F500 and, and Champ um, is the Champ sled feels like it just wants to come out from underneath you. So you actually have to, like, hang on and kind of keep yourself with it instead of, you know, just kind of riding it, if that makes sense. Yep. Yep. Understand completely. So that was a good explanation. Uh, Griffin, you uh, did a little uh, hay bale eating in Wausau and uh, didn't come out of there quite unscathed, right? No, I, I did not get out of there unscathed. That was that definitely wasn't the best weekend, but you know, it I'm I'm happy we still went and it's racing, you know, it it was an accident. It wasn't it wasn't anyone's fault. It just happened to be, you know, wrong place, wrong time and Yeah. Yeah, tough spot. And you uh you injured your thumb pretty significantly, correct? Uh yeah. I actually after that weekend I did end up going to the doctor and then I had a cast on for about six weeks. And well, now, well, now I actually got it off. So that, that was nice, but, um, yep, I got it off and fractured a bone that actually connects like your thumb to your wrist. Mm. So, um, yep. That's I, throttle hand too, isn't it? <laughs> yep. That's throttle hand. So, yeah. All right. You guys ready to do some fun stuff? <laughs> Everybody loves these, right? All right, here we go. Uh, if, we could ever come to a point where we did introductions with a walkout song. What would your walkout song be? Fred, you're first. Oh, putting me on the spot first. Yep. Uh, I don't know. I, I love country music. And I could probably any, – anything by Alan Jackson, Toby Keith, or Luke Combs, I'd have to say, would be, would be a winner for me. All right. That's awesome. Dalton. Oh, boy. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Probably uh, something ACDC, somewhere yeah. along the lines of that. Get the get the blood flowing a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little metal music when you're coming out. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. You need to talk to a uh, uh, USSA photographer, Brad Malmgren. He is a metal head like you can't believe. So, uh, Griffin, you've had the most time to think. I, I did. I even pulled up Spotify to check what to like find a song here. So. <laughs> Uh, I came up with "This Is What I Live For" by Graffiti Ghosts. I mean, that's that's one song that I just, you know, it just it gets you like ready to go. I mean, I don't know. wow, I'm gonna have to look that up. You got me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right, here's another one for you guys. We're gonna go backwards though. Who's your celebrity crush, Griffin? I, just, I don't know here. Um, I know you have a girlfriend in Eagle River that's the Derby Queen and all that kind of stuff. We 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 got that story, but this is the celebrity crush. I don't know what I'm gonna. Uh, oh. No. Uh, go Scarlett. Go Scarlett Johansson. Okay. Dalton. I'm more of like a Carrie Underwood guy. Oh. <laughs> 
So you like Carrie Underwood and you want ACDC for your walkout song. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to say, oh, the fiance is laughing at me behind me. Yeah. Um, I was going to bring that up, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> you know, I, I got to say Carrie Underwood too. She's the only one coming to mind right now. <laughs> I'd love to meet her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Griffin, give us a couple of your sponsors and uh, share them some love because I know it takes a lot of people to make racing go around. Yeah, I actually read, wrote them down over here. So, I mean, first of all, obviously, I have to thank all my families and family and friends. I mean, they they help me out tremendously compared to, I mean, they they're always there by me. So, got to thank them. And then follow that dream, which was actually like came from when my grandpa passed away. Uh, I think it's six years ago, seven years ago. So that, that came around. Uh, Woody's Traction, High Performance Engineering, Conco Farms, Power by Perry, uh, Wall Brothers, and Patrick Custom Carbon. Um, they've all helped me in many ways get to the racetrack, get home, just be out there, be competitive. So, Great. Good stuff. All right. Um, Fred, what's your racing nickname? Everyone calls me Fast Freddy, but I really don't think I'm that fast. <laughs> Dalton, do you have a racing nickname? Mm, Nothing you can share? Not really. <laughs> Griffin, what about you? I, no one's ever said one to my face, so I don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, Dalton, do you talk to yourself or to your sled while you're racing? Uh, myself. You do? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fred, what about you? Oh, yeah, I definitely do. Talk to yourself or your sled? Both. Hmm. Usually, you, I find myself talking to myself more when I'm mad. And I, when the sled's handling or running really well, I talk to the sled in a positive way. Griffin? Uh, definitely myself. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever talked to my sled, but definitely myself. Okay. Um, we always find numbers interesting. So let's tell me the story about how you got your number. Uh, Dalton, 334, is that? Where does that come from? It's like the dumbest thing ever. It is <laughs> my home phone number growing up. It's the last three digits of my home phone number growing up. So really? zero, three, three, four was the last four. <laughs> That's unique. I've not heard that one before. <laughs> yeah. Everybody laughs when they ask when, yeah, it, everybody laughs. <laughs> Fred, where's number 11 from? I, the number 10 was taken already in the champ field. So I had to, uh, I had to come up with a different number. The uh, the ladies up in the scoring booth at USSA actually they hated scoring Stephen and I, so um, they always were bugging me to change my number, change my number. And then this year, you know, I finally did just because of all the confusion, you know, behind my cousin and I. Sure. Yep. Griffin, any particular uh, significance to the number one? Nothing too like specific about it i mean it was when i just first started racing and my dad actually ended up picking mine and then my sisters ended up being one b too so got it good all right um fred sponsorship it's big with you guys i know that the dock and lift company's in there so tell everybody about sponsors that help you go racing in the winter well i gotta first off i gotta thank uh eric and jay they both co-own my sled and they both tune on it um essentially all I am as a driver. Uh, then I got to thank Tony Long at RPM Concepts for building a hell of a motor. Um, Climb, Stud Boy, uh, Pathfinder Chassis, The Boathouse in the Hazelhurst Pub, um, Ride Marine, Monaco Yamaha, Eagle River Dock and Lift, um, well, Scott's Auto Body, Patrick Custom Carbon, um, Cozy Crane and Dock, The Energy Martin Conover for providing subs, um, by the way, if you guys ever get up in that area, fantastic stop. I would highly recommend it. Um, Redline Collision, Richie Oil, and TD Graphics. And if Great. I forgot any of them, I, I'm sorry. Glad to have them on board. All right, we got a couple here left. Um, all right, one for each of you. If you could take one part from any other team and put it on your sled, what part would you take from who? Give you a minute to chew on that one. So you're going to take one part from any other team and put it on your sled. 
What part are you taking and from which team? Dalton, you're up. Gosh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> probably Blaine Stevenson's taillight. Oh, I was expecting a clutch. I love how bright it is. Weirdly enough, I I just I like a bright taillight. I guess so. All right, Griffin. If I had to choose one part, um, I would have to go with honestly Gunner's mind. Wow. Like not, and not even a part, like just, just him. Like this is what his thought process is, you know? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. You know, Gunner's one of those interesting people where I can talk to him to, you know, about some random stuff. And then all of a sudden when he gets to staging, there's like a whole different Gunner that shows up. You know, it's just this mental switch that kind of that trips in him. So interesting comment. Fred, what about you? Oh, I think I would want either Tom or Blaine's workout program. Mm. That's what I would want. I bet they'd give it to you. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. <laughs> All right. I, I, I know Tom runs, uh, does what, try at Ironmans in the summertime? He does, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's nuts. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, you know what? We've, uh, we've been chatting here for a little bit. I certainly appreciate talking to you guys. I know it's a long summer, but... Uh, there's some, uh, hopefully, some big things coming in the USSA world for this, this upcoming season. So I'm pretty excited about it. I, I tell people if half of what I'm hearing is going to happen, uh, we're, we're going to have a great year. So we're looking to really expand our, our program and uh, our activities. So be uh, good to see you guys there. And as, as usual, you'll see me walking around and knocking on your doors and saying hi and uh, bugging you just a little bit here and there. So that's all good. Um, before we go, you know, there's one big question. If you get it wrong, it really impacts how much we do together next year. So. Uh, Reese's peanut butter cup or Snickers? Dalton? I think more of a Snickers guy. <sighs> I don't like candy or chocolate or anything, but. You don't I have, have to like them. You just have to know which one's better. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm going to say Snickers. Fred? Uh, Reese's. Thank you. <laughs> Griffin? Reese's all day. They're always in my trailer, so. Oh, oh that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i appreciate everything you do uh good luck in the off season work hard on it uh i, I think the next season assuming we can get out and race like we want to race is really going to be a good year so appreciate y'all being here have a good night yep thank you have a good one thank you. thanks